So this is part three of the installment with, with Sam Heath here. <laughs> so when you, as when you paint a house, when you're painting in fresco, you got to start at the top and work your way down because you don't want to drip on the part that's nice. That you've they have this painted. term called a giornata, which is a, what you did in one day, and they would often do like a head or a torso in one day and then move on. But just like because, Sam's because they had to paint on wet plaster and it would dry after six or seven hours, and then you were done for the day. Yeah. But when I was up in the top here, it's a different paint that painted the vaults. And you can see they're, they're in a kind of a more gothic style. That's not Piero up there. He was not involved at all. Somebody else. And he arrived in Arezzo. He was living in France. And he was in, uh, even though he came from around here, he was living in Florence. He gets the commission, I don't remember how, but he takes over a commission that's already begun by another artist. Let's go over to the Annunciation. The first, oh, well, let's look. This first scene in the, in the arc here was designed by the first artist, not by Piero. Okay, do they know who that was? Yeah, he's an artist, Biccio or something or other. Okay. Forget. But if you look at the design there, and maybe Piero might have actually painted the figures, I'm not sure, but the design, the cartoon, was done by a different artist. And the artist, the group of figures on the right are all lined up exactly in line. Oh uh, yeah, perspective. Whereas if you go down to the next scene, you see the variations of how he groups figures with space around them. Sometimes he clusters them. Yeah. And in the bottom scene in the battle, he shoves them all together. Yeah. So he's showing a very sophisticated way to compose these that the earlier artist is just in a, in a different generation. Let's go over to the Annunciation yeah. here for a minute. Yeah. So this is where the, um, the archangel angel like Gabriel is announcing to the Virgin that she's going to uh, uh, be uh, impregnated by God. There's usually a, the dove that's usually depicted, but it's not shown in this painting. That's because Piero wouldn't, you know, doesn't need to be so lit, but he's got God up top, who's like issuing oh, the fourth. Oh, look at that. Right? Oh, and yeah. The, and, and she's indoors. The angel is just kind of landed. Uh -huh. uh, and in this case, Mary is, you know, how does she react to this? This is kind of a question for this, that I would ask a student. <laughs> how does she feel about this news? How does Piero kind of present her mental and emotional and spiritual state? And she seems very ready. Yeah. She seems, she's not, she doesn't have fear. She's not even kind of in awe, but she's sort of taking the news in this sort of monumental figure. Interesting. Yeah, it's very matter yeah. of fact, which is what Piero always is. I would call this figure Mary very similar to the other Marys. There's one in uh, uh, Williamston, Massachusetts, that has the same kind of uh, mood or something to her. Very, mm -hmm. very, very calm, monumental. Yeah. But it's, uh, this is my guess is he's looking at Fra Angelico as his inspiration. And yeah. Kind of that design, uh -huh. the column dividing the two, which he does in San Marco and Florence. Uh -huh. But another thing about in this scene, you see how the light is coming from uh, t from our right side, from the Virgin's left. It hits the column. Yeah. It hits the angel. It hits her. It's her, her the right left side of her face is in shadow. The whole chapel, every scene, every figure is lit in the direction of the window behind yeah. the altar. Yeah. With the exception of the dream picture. The dream of Constantine. And yeah. in the dream of yeah. Constantine, if you want to, in that case, the light is coming from that angel who is like coming down. out of the yeah. sky yeah. and holding this little cross, which you can barely see against the cone-shaped Yeah. Thing. And that's what's illuminating that scene. So that's the exception to the rule. Whereas everything else yeah. is like, And if you go above it, where those, those, whoever those characters are holding up that piece of the cross, the light is coming in kind of erotically and really cast them into this incredible relief. Okay. Which I love. I'm going to uh, give it back to Linda and we'll, uh, we'll uh, sign off here. <laughs> so, uh, that's what I love. This scene is just so beautiful. But look at the light on those guys. Yeah. I'm going to uh, sign off here. So, uh, it's been a great privilege to uh, have a, a personal tour and I. Time to chat with uh, Sam Heath here, compare notes. He's been studying this uh, fresco for his whole life, perhaps. Well, it's, it's nice talking to a painter, uh, yeah. as an art historian, <laughs> who, who I, uh, I, don't, I don't make art, I look at it and talk about it. So it's kind of a, an interesting 
conversation we can yeah. have. So after this, we're going on to the little town of Poopy, and then <clears throat> we'll probably make day trips to uh, San Sepulchre and Moon Turkey, where there's another yeah. famous uh, a piano fresco, and maybe even on to Rubio to see uh, one of the paintings there. So, uh, thanks. What a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>